What's going on, everybody? So today, we're going to be looking at a few things. Uh, we're going to be looking at analyzing Medicare data, but we're also going to be looking at, you know, kind of the pros and cons of having things on the cloud. Uh, specifically, we're going to be looking at two um, essentially cloud services, uh, Saturn Cloud.io and BigQuery. Now, some of you might have heard of BigQuery already, which BigQuery is basically Google's kind of service that allows you to store data and pull data from their uh, typically big table or some, whatever database you have on their side. Uh, maybe on the other side, many of you have not heard of SaturnCloud.io. What SaturnCloud.io is, it basically lets you spin up a VM. And basically with this VM, you know, if you're just kind of, this is, this is kind of the UI setting up the basic dashboard, you know, it's pretty simple. You can set up, you know, some sort of name for a VM. Uh, you can set up the disk space. You can set the amount of, you know, RAM you want to have. Uh, as well as kind of the auto shut off. So that way you're not, again, this is going to be all run AWS. So you're going to be uh, incurring AWS charges as you go along. Um, so if you want to shut it off so you're not doing that, you know, that's an option. Uh, and then also probably for some people who's, who are really into this, you can set up your environment and the environmental um, configuration prior to basically spinning this up. Uh, I didn't do that. I was kind of lazy, but that is an option. So for those of you who like making sure that you've, you've got a .yaml file, um, already set up so that way you know you can ensure that whatever Python libraries or whatever you're bringing into this um, environment pre exist that's possible and then you can basically spin this up. I already have one running and we're going to kind of work through this CMS Medicare data set. All right, so like I said, we're going to start out by getting data from BigQuery. Now, BigQuery, um, again, you can basically interact with it by importing the library for Google. So you can import um, from cloud or from google.cloud, import BigQuery. Um, and then again, you're going to need to also set up some authorization. So google. Uh, to import service account. So, so you're going to need to do this first um, in order to just make sure everything is hunky dory. After that, we're going to need to do some setup of credentials. Uh, so here, you know, we're going to call this service account and then basically creden. We're going to see if I can spell credentials. Uh, chills dot from service account file. So we're going to be pulling this from a file, basically. Um, I'm not going to show you it, but when you set up a BigQuery, um, you, query, you get credentials, which I, I won't show you because obviously I don't want someone copy pasting things. But um, you, you can get a JSON file. And using that JSON file, this is where you can basically just reference this file. So in this case, I've just called it project g.json. And then you can provide it a scope, or scopes really, but we're just going to provide it uh, a thing. After that, we want to set up the client. Uh, so client equals, you know what, I'm just going to do this. Client equals, you know, BigQuery clients, and then you pass the credentials and um, the project ID, which comes with uh, the credential, um, which this is just basically going to pull from the project g.json. Uh, uh, so this is something interesting, though, because um, when I first set this up, I'll be honest, I accidentally, like you can actually set up different users in BigQuery, because um, again, Google dashboard where you can kind of just manage all of your credentials. It's not just for BigQuery, it's, it's really, you know, everything involving Google's kind of uh, cloud products. And um, I accidentally set up a different user, but I didn't realize that I set up a user with different uh, rights. And so I spent, I don't know, remember how long trying to figure out why I couldn't actually connect because I didn't have the correct rights. Probably spent like two hours being like, why can't this code work, right? Like this short code is like everything set up correctly. So if for some reason your code's not working and you're getting some sort of authorization error, I would check to make sure you're running on the same account. So let's test this really quick, just to make sure, cross your fingers. Sorry there, I was lazy. I spilled this cred this time around. All right, that's finished. Now we can import this data set. So we're gonna take this Medicare data set. We can call it Medicare client. Uh, data set, um, and, and you can go more into this, but basically uh, Google breaks it down into like data, data sets, table sets, tables. Um, I, now, just for kicks and giggles, we're gonna actually print everything from there. So, so that you can see what tables exist. So you can list out those tables using list tables, kind of obvious, right? So let's test this. Uh, so we can see now all the tables that exist in this healthcare data set. So each of these, it's more like a file really, but like essentially you can call these as tables. Um, so if you go to the, the on, on Kaggle.com, 
um, you can kind of look at all of these files that they have. All right, so now we've kind of seen like, you know, this is kind of how you get the data. So, or how you look at the tables. So now you want to get what the data, right? That's probably your first, your first goal is to kind of get the data. Let's actually first look at all the columns that you can kind of get from this. So let's just look at uh, the columns you can get from basically one of these tables, specifically, hold on. So this query, you're gonna set up a query job essentially. And, oh, wow, sorry guys, let me, let me figure out why this isn't, okay. Uh, uh, query job equals client dot query. It, it's pretty obvious syntax, I think. Um, you know, query, and then results equals query job. Sorry, man. I don't know why this is not following along with me. Good job um, dot results, or sorry, result. And basically, you can just say for row in result print row. So we're just gonna look at what what kind of shows up. All right, sorry about that, guys. I forgot you got to put in this big query public data dot, you know, basically reference the entire kind of path down to this table before you can run the query. So now you can run this query. Um, so basically we can run this and you'll see, you'll kind of get the rows um, and it's a little bit messy, but you kind of see you get, um, this is the provider ID. This is kind of the provider name, the, the address, um, city, things like that. So this will give you some interesting information there. Um, and also give you some other things. Uh, basically, uh, there's the DRG code, which is over here, this 025 or this 039, which is the diagnosis related group code, essentially. It's where things kind of roll up when it comes to like the ICD, which is the, I, I know I'm now spacing on it, but it's basically how we break down what happens to you, like when doctors report, um, you know, what happens to a patient, like if a patient comes in, and was hit by a car in the right leg, there's an ICD code for that kind of thing. Or if a patient comes in with, you know, whatever, it's your diagnosis code, essentially. So it's how you're diagnosed um, out here. So you got something like 0666, whatever, intracranial hemorrhage or cerebral infraction. Um, and so, so that's pretty um, generalized, right? Like it even has an or in there. It, it's not a very specific diagnosis. So, so you can see it's kind of rolled up. So the cost is the, the basic cost they're giving you here is the average cost of some some event like that. So let's take this and just do kind of a basic query. Um, let's let's do something a little nicer, which is like let's get the count of the number of basically provider providers per state. Um, okay, so let's see if this works. Basically, what I was saying. Um, so essentially, what I've done. Here is, a, I actually like to use state first, but it's provider state. So we're looking at how many providers there are per state. Um, actually, if I were to do this, let me, I actually didn't do this right. You wanna do distinct. Okay, there we go. So now we've got distinct provider names. Um, so now we get the number of provider states or provider per state. And the, these are the top ones, right? So you've got um, California, Texas, Florida, New York, et cetera. So these, these probably make sense, right? California is pretty populated. Texas is pretty big. Actually, that's probably more likely. It's probably really big. I mean, that's, that's just a guess. And they, all, this data set's also, um, you know, an example data set. And so that's kind of just this first part. I just want to kind of get you comfortable with this data set. Uh, and then the next part, what we're gonna be doing is really discussing how to kind of take this and analyze uh, a basic problem, which if you saw before, there was kind of this, uh, there was like this average cost for DRG codes. And also along with that, there's the number of cases for that DRG code that came in. And so essentially we're gonna kind of combine those and, and try to figure out which states have the highest average DRG costs for specific, you know, in general. So we're gonna just basically count how often the, the average DRG cost is above the uh, average for the entire uh, USA. So the average state versus average USA. Um, this was just kind of a start to get you kind of comfortable with BigQuery and Saturn, uh, Saturn Cloud.io. Again, it's it's more about being able to share this. I think it's a big thing with uh, Saturn Cloud.io. Cloud it's shareable. And for anyone who's ever worked as a data scientist or as an analyst, you know you know how difficult it can be to kind of share things around, things like even a, a basic Excel. You know, someone shares it, someone copies it, someone, you know, you, you, you end up losing the original. And so this this lets you kind of keep that centralization 
while being decentralized. Uh, I think that's that's kind of where things are going. Is it's that there's this new way towards centralized centralized decentralization where you can do things in a centralized fashion. Where you know here you've got a single uh, Jupyter notebook, but it's decentralized because each team can manage it themselves um, and then share it around and 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 keep track of it. Um, there's actually a Git option here as well that you can end up sticking this up or uh, managing this in Git. So, so this is really, really great in that sense. It lets you share easily, it lets other people see what you've done, um, but also lets you kind of maintain some control. All right, so this is again, the kind of the end of part one. We'll go into the next part where we're gonna kind of be answering which, uh, which states based off this Medicare data set, this isn't, like I don't think this is in any way comprehensive uh, of all data ever. In fact, I know it's not comprehensive, but it, it's just kind of, just to show you, just kind of to show you what's going on and, and get an idea of how you can mess around with this data. Thanks so much and uh, see you soon.